Hey gang, it's JC and this is your Daily Dose for Tuesday, July 20th, 2010. A cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. Archives at the top of the page, Dave Murray's weather forecast, and your opportunity to subscribe to the audio of the Daily Dose there on iTunes anytime you want. We are inside today. i got to get really close to the light and really close to the camera. Otherwise, it sounds like I'm in a garage. I'm in a garage. Okay, let's get going here as we roll on with our 15-month paid vacation. Lindsay Lowen going to jail today, and this time, Samantha Ronson's safe word isn't going to get the cuffs off. Glenn Beck says he might be going blind. I mean, in addition to being blind to the truth, okay? Now, if that does happen, he can team up with Rush Limbaugh and Sarah Palin and go on the deaf, dumb, and blind tour. Mel Gibson might be moving back to Australia. That's what they're saying. Be careful, Mel. I hear that the girls there hit back. Jennifer Aniston, topless photographs all over the Internet. That's the buzz. I've looked at them. I've checked them out. No big deal. She's not even showing anything. By the way, Jen, you're about 10 years too late. In Cleveland, they have officially removed all of the LeBron James merchandise from team stores. The jerseys will now be used to clothe poor children in impoverished third world cities like Cleveland. Whitey Herzog going into the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown this weekend. There have been some induction ceremonies in Cleveland, Cleveland, in Cooperstown, where people have been dropping like flies because of the heat and the humidity, and you're sitting out there in an open field, if you've ever been to Cooperstown, where they do the induction. It's, it, it can get really, really hot. Good news for those of you making the trip. Cooperstown weather forecast for Sunday, partly cloudy and 77 degrees. That's perfect upstate New York weather. By the way, those of you going to Chicago for the Cubs Cardinal weekend, Friday, chance of showers, 91. Saturday, chance of storms, and 84. And on Sunday, when everybody will be gone, because ESPN moved the game to Sunday night, so everybody's gone. It's only Cub fans at Wrigley Field. You'll be watching on TV. Perfect game time temperature, about 76 degrees, and dry as a bone. All right, yesterday, Donald Trump officially dropped interest in Rachel Yucatel, otherwise known as Tiger Woods' mistress number one, the one they paid $10 million to to hush her up because she sort of knew too much. Anyhow, Donald Trump loses interest officially yesterday in Rachel Yucatel, for Celebrity Apprentice, this coincidentally took place right about the time that Trump learned that she had signed in to do Celebrity Rehab. So you can tell we'll be on Celebrity Rehab with Jason Davis, Frankie Lons. I mean, shouldn't the show at this point just be called Rehab? All right, today is Celebrity Tuesday, and as you know, every Tuesday we focus on a celebrity that over the last, uh, you know, 25, 30 years, 26 since I've been here in St. Louis, it's not somebody we just interviewed, it's somebody I actually got to know on a personal level. And today, we are going to talk about Super Dave Osborne. Now, back in the late 1960s, when everybody was watching Bonanza on Sunday nights at NBC, me and my friends were all watching the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour, which was a show that was very, very funny, but, but it's that phrase, ahead of its time. Uh, they were constantly fighting with their bosses at CBS over censorship issues, politically censorship, uh, touchy areas and stuff like that. A lot of political stuff, but a lot of very, very funny stuff and a lot of great uh, cutting edge social stuff and cultural stuff and music. You know, it wasn't a lot of places that you could turn on TV in the late 1960s and see a Jefferson Airplane or see The Who, but you could on the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. Now. It should be no surprise to anybody that the show was as good as it was because a couple of young guys by the name of Rob Reiner and Steve Martin and Bob Einstein, who of course would go on later to become Super Dave Osborne, that was their writing staff. Now, it was some pretty big names back there. A lot of guys who then were just sort of getting started, but as we know, went on to wonderful things in show business. Now, Bob Einstein, a.k.a. Super Dave Osborne, back in those days, had an alter ego by the name of Officer Judy, a state highway patrolman, who if you go on YouTube right now, you'll see an absolutely hilarious bit that he did with Liberace back around, I don't know, 68, 69, somewhere in there, when uh, he pulled Liberace over for playing too fast, playing piano too fast. Just absolutely great stuff, and you can see that on YouTube right now. Uh, Bob Einstein, by the way, had a famous kid brother, you might know him by the name of Albert Brooks, 
who you saw in Lost in America. And in the movie Modern Romance, Super Dave plays a sports store, like a sporting goods store clerk, who pretty much cleans out his brother's wallet. That's in Modern Romance. Of course, you saw Albert in Broadcast News. Anyhow, um, Bob Einstein went on to be a writer for the Sonny and Cher Comedy Hour in the early 1970s, and then teamed up in the 1980s with John Viner, a very funny comedian and impressionist, and they did a TV show by the name of Bizarre, and that's where the Super Dave Osborne character really sort of came into play, the stunt daredevil who always seemed to get wasted um, trying to do some sort of big evil can evil type stunt, and instead... You know, got mashed on the side of a bridge abutment or something like that. So, um, in the late 1980s, they bring Bob Einstein, a.k.a. Super Dave Osborne, to St. Louis to be interviewed by us on the radio. Now, apparently he had been in town a couple of days, and we were one of his last interviews, and everywhere he went, nobody had the slightest idea who he was. And nobody, I, nobody had any idea what his backstory was, all the writing and the connection to the Smothers Brothers and all that. Nobody knew anything. So he comes walking into our studio... And I start reeling all of this stuff that I just told you here. I start reeling this off, off the top of my head. And he just had this look on his face like, somebody knows me. Somebody knows who I am. Or as Super Dave would say, oh, somebody knows who I am. So we got to be very, very good friends. A lot of times I'd go out to Los Angeles for a movie junket or something like that. I'd call him up and say, hey, Soup, you know, I'm going to be in town. And he'd come about 7 o'clock in the morning in his SUV, pick me up. We'd go out and have breakfast. He'd drive me around Los Angeles. Remember Meryl Steubing uh, from the Love Boat? I'm like, uh, yeah, uh, Meryl Steubing, that's uh, Gavin McLeod. Yeah, I bought his house. You know, that sort of stuff. So we, were, we became very good friends. When my first daughter was born, he sent us a Tiffany's Silver Spoon. He got to the point where he started calling the radio station when we were over at Classic Rock KSD back in the 80s. He was like calling the radio station every morning about 7 o'clock. He'd wake up. You know, Los, Los Angeles time it would be nine o'clock our time. He'd call up and just call in on the show. It was just great. So uh, once he says, so, you know, I know you want to interview for me." I kept bugging him. I wanted to interview him for TV. He's like, "Ah, oh, okay. Well, come on to Canada. That's where I tape my show, Super Dave Osborne Show. Five hundred people in a live auditorium situation. And the next thing I know, he's flying me to Canada, picks me up in a limousine, takes me to the show. I'm sitting in the third row of the audience, five hundred people behind me, and all of a sudden, in the middle of the show. He says, hey, JC, come on up here. And now I'm up on stage in the middle of taping the Super Dave Osborne show. He hands me a microphone. He says, you wanted to interview me? Go ahead and interview 500 people in the auditorium. Just go absolutely crazy. Some of you will remember that when we ran that on TV here in St. Louis. Now, I just spoke to Bob about a year, year and a half ago. He's doing great. Of course, he was in Ocean's 13 with George Clooney and Brad Pitt. And he's a regular on Curb Your Enthusiasm on HBO with Larry David. And just one of my all-time favorite people in show business. And uh, one of the guys who was an early show business hero of mine, Super Dave Osborne, otherwise known as Bob Einstein. All right, 41 years ago today, at 9.56 at night, I know exactly where you were and what you were doing. Because everybody was doing the same thing. We were huddled in front of our TVs, watching Neil Armstrong land on the moon on this day, July 20th, 1969. All right, JC's Wayback Machine. To try to cool you off because of the hot, humid weather here in St. Louis these last couple of weeks, we go back to the Ice Bowl of 1967. You'll see Jack Buck as a young up-and-comer, same thing with Frank Gifford, and of course the great Ray Scott. JC's Video Village today, back to 1997, our one-on-one -on -one interview with Madonna for the motion picture Evita. Not necessarily the news this week, Bob Costas and Tony La Russa. JC's Eye Candy today, I don't know, I'm going uh, to grow old gracefully. And if you look at me, that might be a tough sell. But um, you look at Kate Gosselin right now, you look at the pictures, and you tell me whether there was some Botox involved. All right, tomorrow we'll be back with another edition of the Daily Dose, and we're going to talk a little bit about the fastest rising baby names for 2010, and also five signs that you shouldn't get back together with your ex. That's it, the Daily Dose for Tuesday, July 20th. 2010, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. We'll talk to you tomorrow. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye. <laughs>